Remember when I talked to you guys about some of the best foods to buy at times like these when things may or may not keep you at home? One of those things are garbanzo beans. God, I'm so, what am I doing? I grew up eating hummus at the house. I taught my mom how to make hummus and she's actually better at it than I am now but it's still probably one of my favorite dips and it's so versatile. Use it on spreads, breads, freds, meds, heads. This is all you're really gonna need to make your hummus. You're gonna need a little bit of tahini, some garlic, some lemon juice, olive oil, and of course your soaked beans, but we need a shot of espresso before we start. Now soaking their garbanzo beans is super important. I actually soak mine for about two days and I use twice the amount of water as the amount of beans because they are going to absorb a lot of it. If you're in a pinch and you're trying to entertain some guests and you just really want to make some hummus, honestly, you can buy the canned stuff. It's still relatively cheap, but I always keep fresh garbanzo beans, dried garbanzo beans in the house, so I just use these. This is fine. Make sure you strain out all the liquid that you had soaked the garbanzo beans in and discard it. You're not going to really want to keep any of that. Go ahead and place this into your pot and you want to make sure your pot is big enough to at least fill it to three times the amount of water as you have beans so i needed a much bigger pot this is super important you want to make sure that your pot is big enough to fit the adequate amount of water i use about two to three times the amount of water as beans and then i actually add in about two tablespoons worth of salt bring this over your stove and we're going to start to cook these bad boys this does take quite a while to cook probably two to three hours from what I had done, but once it comes up to a simmer, throw a lid on it, turn it down just a bit, and make sure it cooks completely. After a couple of hours, your beans should be incredibly soft. You should be able to just smush them with your fingers. Now that your beans are cooked, we're gonna go ahead and strain all this liquid out and let these cool down. This is super important and save some of that liquid. Now when you're making hummus, you do wanna make sure that the beans are very, very soft. So when you go to puree them, you get a really smooth consistency. The only thing is, is you don't really wanna make this when they're hot because the flavor is different when it's hot. So if you do puree it and then you taste it, it may taste different once it finally cools down. But pureeing them when they're cold doesn't actually give you as smooth of a texture. So we're gonna let these cool down just to room temperature before we blend everything together. Now before we actually ninja ninja blend these guys, you do want to get the rest of your mise en place ready. And this is going to consist of peeling a bunch of garlic. Realistically, that's going to take the longest amount of time because I do like a lot of garlic. I'm using about 10 cloves. Some of them are a little bit small, but you're going to need a lot. Then we're going to juice two really big lemons. This comes out to almost four ounces of lemon juice. It's pretty significant. You're going to need quite a bit of this as well if you want that nice acidity behind it. The reason for this is that the hummus can have a lot of fat in it, so the lemon juice helps cut that just a bit. Now we're gonna actually puree all of our garlic and half of our lemon juice together. This is going to help the garlic just break down a little bit instead of just tossing it all in with our garbanzo beans because then you're gonna have chunks of garlic. Now we're gonna add in four cups worth of your cooked garbanzo beans. Again, you can use canned if you want to, and we're gonna puree this until it starts emulsifying and coming together. It should look a little rough and chalky because we haven't added in the rest of our liquids. Now we're gonna add in the rest of our lemon juice, two tablespoons worth of tahini, or you could use a little less if you would like, about three ounces worth of really nice olive oil, one and a half ounces of blended canola oil, and about three tablespoons worth of salt. Now we're going to blend all this together for quite a few minutes. I like to let this just go until it's completely emulsified. Honestly, three to four minutes is going to be minimum. Once it's nice and pureed, give this a taste and taste it for anything else. I did want a lot more black pepper in this and a touch of liquid just to kind of thin it out just a little bit. I'm also going to add in a little more olive oil because I wanted the flavor and bring this all back together. Now I know it looks a little loose, but once this is in the fridge and it cools down like it should properly, it's going to stiffen up quite a bit because of all the fats. Give it a taste and let's get half of this into a separate container so that way we can have a little fun with the next part. I've been hanging on to these pickled shallots we used for the Yukihira bento. Now we can take these pickled shallots, drain them just a little bit, pop them into our hummus and have a pickled shallot hummus. It's gonna be freaking good. Now you don't have to use pickled shallots, but they are delicious. And if you followed my Yukihira recipe for the bento, you probably have some on hand. You can use anything you want, some pickled chilies, some chipotle peppers, but you really wanna see some chunks of the shallots or whatever you're adding into it and just adjust it for seasoning as you go. Get this into another container and let's get these back Bad boys cool down. Once they're slightly cool, look how nice this spreads. It looks so creamy, so delicious. We're gonna put both spreads on each piece of bread. Yes, I'm still eating the bread I froze earlier. Garnish them with a few spices like togarashi or black pepper. 
Now for secret le technique no jitsu number one, we're gonna actually turn this into a dressing. What you're gonna do is take about three tablespoons worth of your hummus, one squeeze of lemon juice, or you could use whatever liquid you want, like some of the garbanzo bean liquid we had saved from earlier, just to kind of give it a more runny texture. Then we're gonna take some of our leftover tapuli salad we had made from a previous video and stir this all together to get it fully coated. And remember, you can make this thicker or thin, however really you wanna do this, but just get this on a nice plate. Take those slices of toast with our hummus on them, put them right on the plate on the rim, and look at this beautiful plate of leftover salad with hummus dressing and hummus with leftover bread. Cross-utilize everything. And there it is, guys, our hummus. We did the pickled shallot hummus, regular garlic hummus, and then we're actually able to turn the pickled shallot hummus into a dressing for our salad. This salad was leftovers that we made from our tapuli video, so if you wanna check that out and see how to make tapuli, check that out in the cards above. The garlic hummus is really nice. It has that hit of garlic, but it's not overwhelming. Mm -hmm. The pickled shallot hummus has a little bit of sweetness behind it, but it's still really nice. Using hummus as a dressing gives it such nice coverage on all the greens. It has a nice body to it. You can make it as thick or thin as you want. I mean, it's really up to you. Utilizing these components to make a meal with essentially leftovers is really what you guys should be starting to do. What's your favorite style of hummus if you've ever had it before? Spicy, sweet, regular, whatever the case may be. Honestly, I love them all. My name is Chef PK. I hope I taught you something today. Get subscribed and remember, keep playing with your food. Top when I speak, all cap with the speech till they caught up in the rapture. I'm so out of line with the phrase game. Let's take a break, been a long day.